Hola, hola, caracolas. Today we're going to do the Spanish speaking world. So remember, Spanish 101 is an intro to the language and the culture. So it's really important to understand where Spanish is spoken, where you can go to speak this amazing language, how this language affects other parts of the world, how it affects our culture. And so I'm just going to go over a whole bunch of fun details. So remember, you guys, um, there is a cheat sheet that goes with this video. So if you are in Brightspace and you go to content and you are in module one, you're going to see the lesson for the Spanish speaking world. As you follow along with me, you can fill in this note sheet. I call it a cheat sheet and you can then use this when you go to take your quiz. And so this will allow you a lot of success. So make sure you're paying attention, especially for anything I throw in there um, that could be a little bit tricky. So let's get started. Okay, so vamos, the Spanish speaking world. So las lenguajes nativas más habladas son. What do you think the most, what are the most spoken native languages in the world? Okay, so there's a lot of languages and thinking of those languages, I would like you to list the top five most spoken native languages. And when I say native, I am a native speaker of English because that was the language that was spoke to me as I was raised by my parents. And so whoever raised you, what language they spoke to you first, that is your native language. So I would not be a native language speaker of Spanish. That is something I learned. Okay, so that's the difference between being a native speaker and a non-native speaker. So hopefully I spent enough time where you guys have been able to come up with a list of the most spoken languages. Number one is Mandarin coming in at 1.3 billion speakers. And actually, this makes a lot of sense since China has the largest population of people and the majority of those people speak Mandarin, that that would be the most spoken language. So Mandarin comes in at 1.3 billion. Number two is Spanish coming in at 496 million. Number three is English, which comes in at 400 million. So if you're already a native speaker of English and now you're learning Spanish, I mean, that's a power duo. You're learning, you have the top two most spoken languages in the world. And when you're able to communicate with more people, so for example, if you learn Spanish, and you can communicate with 496 more million people, whether you're going into healthcare or whether you're going into law enforcement, education, um, and marketing, you're going to be able to communicate with that many more people and that will offer you so many more opportunities. And so a real incentive to learn the language of Spanish. Coming in at number four would be Arabic, Arabe, and number five is Hindi. So these would be your five most spoken languages. Here I am in Paris. Um, this is called the I love you wall and it has, I believe 250 languages written in I love you. And so it's a main tourist attraction that people love to come see. Um, and I was able to see it in 2023 and it was pretty cool. Um, so las lenguajes más estudio en el mundo. So we just talked about the most spoken languages. I want you to think about the most studied languages in the world. So what are the most studied languages in the world? So las lenguajes más estudiado en el mundo. Numero uno, inglés. Not surprising. This is the number one language that's used internationally for business. It is also commonly used as the number one language online. And so again, um, if you are a native speaker of English, you already have a lot of opportunities. So any language you add to that is just going to allow for you to expand those opportunities. Coming in number two as the second most studied language is El Francais. So we have French. Coming in at number three is Mandarin. Coming in at numero cuatro, number four is El Español. And coming in number five is German. So here are your top five most studied languages in the world. And just to give you the numbers, a billion and a half people study English, 120 million study French, 
25 million study Mandarin, 18 million study Spanish, and that's one of you right now, and German is 15 million. So I was surprised, not, not so, because I actually picked up French after I did Spanish, and I have no regrets. I love French. I originally resisted it because Spanish was challenging enough as it was, and so picking up another language seemed really daunting, but they are both romance languages. And so once you know one romance language, it isn't as challenging to pick up another because there's lots of cognates, but also you understand the structure of how the language works. And so I highly encourage you to even expand past Spanish. But with that being said, French is one of the fastest growing languages in the world with 750 million people expected to speak it by 2050. So with that being said, you know, a lot of school programs around here have dropped French, a lot of high school programs, but now it is one of the fastest growing. So it has 220 native speakers currently in 2024. So why will it have 750 million people? There's a very specific reason why this language is growing so fast. So if you thought about history, where did the French colonize? The French colonized in Africa, and those French African countries right now are having population booms, about five babies per family, which is making more French speakers. And so really interesting to think about the ebbs and flows of languages as well. So don't um, hesitate to learn French as well if you have not already sought that out. Okay, so what percentage of the world's population is bilingual? Well, what is bilingual? Bilingual is a person that's can converse in more than one language. So for example, I'm actually trilingual. I can converse in English, Spanish, and French. So what percentage of the world is bilingual? What percentage can speak two languages? So I give you four options. I don't expect you to know, but maybe which one is speaking to you? Which one do you think makes the most sense? What is the world's population? The world's population is around 8 billion. So with that being said, 43% of our population is bilingual. So I thought that was pretty good. I thought that was pretty high. I don't know why I thought maybe it would be a little bit lower. So that's, that's good incentive to be one of those people that's bilingual. What is the most bilingual country? So here we have India, Canada, China, Indonesia. The most bilingual country is Indonesia. So lots of dialects being spoken, a little bit more access to different languages. So with that being said, what percentage of the United States population is bilingual? So I believe we have around 320 million population-wise. So of our population, how many people are bilingual? If you said 20%, fantástico, estás correcto. So 20% of the people living in Los Estados Unidos are bilingual. With that question being asked, what is the most bilingual state in the United States? If you said California, you're correct. So what I want you to do right now is to make a list of five cities that have Spanish origin and five states that have Spanish origin. So for example, Los Angeles, Los Angeles would be a city with Spanish origin name. So I want you to name five cities with a Spanish origin name and five states with Spanish origin name, okay? And then we will go over what you have brainstormed. So hopefully you've had a second to think about what states have Spanish origin names and what state cities have Spanish origin and what cities of Spanish origin there are. So I'm going to start with some of the obvious. New Mexico, California. This is after Princess Califia from Spain. And I actually think I forgot to put Texas on my list. Texas would be um, a dialect that came from Spanish origin. Colorado. Colorado means colorist. 
what state do you think means flowered? Florida. Flor literally means flower. So Florida, when you add the I-D-A to it, it means the E-D, flowered. So what state do you think means mountainous? Exactly. Monta Montana. If you put that little tilde above the N, it would become montaña, which is mountainous. Cities with Spanish origin, like I mentioned, Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco, Santa Barbara, El Paso, Santa Fe, Los Gatos, Bo Boca Raton. I could go on and on. And so I really, what I love about languages is so much is that it's not just language. Language is associated with food, it's associated with history, it's associated with geography. And so when you learn the language, you learn all of these things with it um, unintentionally. And so it is so cool that learning a language encompasses all of these things. And so why do we have so many states and cities with Spanish origin names? So if you are familiar with history, Here is the map, okay, really quickly, of North America when we had the United States and we had Mexico. And we started a war based on manifest destination, conquering from sea to shining sea. And it was actually the first war that the U.S. began out of pure greed, right? It was that manifesto, manifest destination, um, conquering sea to shining sea. And so Mexico already existed here. And look how far up it went into um, what is now known as the United States. And so all of these territories um, were already established. And just to clarify, the Spanish came over conquered the Aztecs. As they were conquering, they set up their colonies, and that would be San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, um, setting up all these missions, right? So that's why there'd be Spanish origin names. And then the war, the Mexican-American War began. And um, this was the war where Mexico lost half of its territory for no, basically out of a war, out of greed. And so what I want you to think of right now is what does Mexico in their history books call this same exact war? <laughs> I got a phone call, so I had to go back again, but hold on a second. So what Mexico calls that same exact war, and this is where I think it's so invaluable for you to gather as many perspectives as possible. Um, in the Mexican history book, they call it the American invasion, because in Mexico's perspective, they were invaded by America and lost half of their territory in that process. And so, wow, what a different, it really speaks different when you hear the American invasion compared to the Mexican-American War. And this is the value of getting a different perspective. And again, there's 8 billion people living on this planet and they all have different perspectives. And so the more perspectives that you can gather the more educated you will be and you can understand and maybe empathize more with everybody that we inhabitate this, you know, global planet with. And so um, I always think that is a great example. Um, also why we have so many Spanish origin cities and states and culture in within our society. Okay, so with that being said, how many native Spanish speakers are in the United States? So there are 62 million. By 2050, 30% of our population will be Spanish speaking. And so again, if you're going into healthcare, marketing, law enforcement, education, if you can relate to 62 million more people within our country, that's going to give you so many more opportunities. Also a way to better understand the people that you are cohabitating with. Um, to give you that different perspective. So definitely great incentive to continue with this language. Hay cuantos lenguajes en el mundo? How many languages are there in the world? So there are around 7,117. So lots of languages, and that includes dialects. So let's say Mexico, one of their official languages is Spanish, but within Mexico, um, there are over 250 dialects that are still spoken in different places around Mexico. And so dialects also um, are a part of that number. Okay, 
So however, about 2,000 of those languages have fewer than 1,000 speakers, and there's also things known as a dead language. And so Latin would be a dead language, which is no longer spoken anymore by a population. So what country has the largest population of Spanish speakers? In our next lesson, we'll be going over the Spanish-speaking countries and capitals, and there's actually 21 of them. So what country has the largest? So I didn't give you all of the, um, the countries here. The EEUU is an abbreviation for the United States. So Mexico comes in first with 120 million native Spanish speakers, and so they have the largest population. But the United States comes in number two um, with the second highest most population, and so we'll get more into that in the next lesson. Um, but hopefully you guys have a broader view of the Spanish-speaking world. Learning Spanish isn't just a language, but it's, it's culture, it's travel, it's history. And learning Spanish is incredibly beneficial, especially with it being the second most spoken language in the world and the second most language used on the internet. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure that is probably enough for today. I will see you in our next lesson when we do the Spanish-speaking countries and capitals. Que tenga buen día. Have a great day. Nos vemos. Ciao.